So today I received my order of six Macs equipped with the brand new M4 chipset and I'm going to be testing all of them but in this video we'll be looking at 11 amazing games being run on the most powerful Mac that you can buy right now, the upper end MacBook Pro with the M4 Max chip with 48 gigabytes of RAM, 40 GPU cores and 16 CPU cores of which 12 are performance cores and 4 are efficiency cores. And the games that we're looking at will test the M4 Max to the limit, everything from AAA games optimized for the M series Mac chipset to console emulation and Windows DirectX 12 titles being translated through crossover. We'll also be doing some benchmark comparisons with the equivalent M3 Max chip and see just how far Apple Silicon Gaming has come. So first up, we're looking at the game Resident Evil 4 Remake. This is easily one of the most optimized Mac ports that you can get for Apple Silicon hardware. And we can easily run this at the 4K high graphics preset and we are not even using Metal FX. So there's no upscaling involved here. This is pure 4K. And this game can run at these settings at about 48 to 60 FPS relatively consistently. In areas with lots of enemies on screen at once, you might decide that Metal FX upscaling might come a little bit handy. Switching this to quality mode lowers the in-engine rendered resolution, upscales back to 4K using image upscaling algorithms, granting us that extra FPS that we might need, pushing us over the 60 or even 70 FPS mark. Overall, it's an excellent port showing off the power of the M4 Max chip. Next up, Minecraft is capable of over 1000 FPS, thanks to the fact that we've installed native ARM version of Java, thanks to Prism Launcher. And it's not just vanilla Minecraft that looks great, we can also run complementary shaders. Here we're running on the high preset and it really makes the game look completely different and fantastic. Here at the 1440p resolution, we're getting about 150 to 180 FPS. And here as well, we're testing out a different shader called the Photon Shader, which makes the world look absolutely amazing. I especially love the clouds. And here we're pushing the game even further using the Modern Arch Resource Pack, completely transforming the way that everything looks in the game. Next up, we're looking at Grid Legends, one of the very few natively optimized Apple Silicon Mac racing games. And this is easily capable of running at 4K resolution at the 16 by 10 aspect ratio at over 100 FPS. And not only this, when we compare the M4 Max on the right with the previous generation M3 Max on the left, both of which have 48 gigabytes of RAM and 40 GPU cores, the M4 Max averages an FPS of 96 compared to the M3 Max's 63, an increase of 52%. And it's not just native Mac titles that work great from the M4 Max chip, we can also run high-end Windows games through translation layers like Crossover. Here, Cyberpunk 2077 is gonna get a native Mac port in 2025, but for now, we can play this using Crossover and D3D Metal. And here, what's really interesting is that if we compare the M4 Max with its previous generation M3 Max chip, once again, we are getting substantial substantial improvements in frame rates. The M4 Max seems to be running at about 55% faster than the M3 Max, and not only that, it feels like the frame timing is a bit more smooth as well. And this is also reflected when we turn on ray tracing. So yes, ray tracing does work through Windows translation layers at the moment. The M3 generation of Apple Silicon Max introduced ray tracing hardware, and it looks like the M4 generation has improved ray tracing performance on the chip, even through translation layer. And it feels like ray tracing on the M4 generation is much more viable. Anyway, I can't wait to see Cyberpunk 2077 come out on Mac early in 2025. It'll probably be one of the best ray tracing games on Mac. Speaking of Mac ray tracing, the game Firmament, a first person adventure puzzle game, recently released a ray tracing update. Here we're testing the game with ray tracing off at 1440p at the Epic Graphics preset. This is a natively optimized game capable of taking advantage of the full suite of metal and metal Metal FX features. Performance is really good here running at 1440p, we're locked in at 60 FPS at the moment. However, if we do try out the ray tracing option, unfortunately the performance isn't great. We're dropping down to just 22 or 23 FPS, which is a little bit nauseating. And personally, I find it hard to tell the actual difference between the ray traced and non ray traced versions of the game. Anyway, let me know in the comments, do you think ray tracing is worth this kind of performance hit? Next up, we're playing the multiplayer game War Thunder. So here we're running the game at the full Ultra HQ texture pack on the maximum graphics preset at 1440p with TAA and SSAA turned on. So those are both forms of anti-aliasing, which are relatively taxing, but the M4 Max can handle this with absolute ease. Here at 1440p at all of these maximum graphics settings, we're easily hitting about 90 to 100 FPS with no real issues in or outside the cockpit. 
Next up, we're looking at Counter-Strike 2. So unlike War Thunder, the Mac port of this game has been cancelled. And the best way to play this game on a Mac is going to be through the crossover Windows translation layer. If you do want to find out how to play Windows games like this on a Mac, then please make sure to click on the link at the top of the video description for a video tutorial. Here, I'm running this fairly competitive game at just 1080p at medium settings in order to get the best frame rate. You'll find that the game is going to be quite stuttery for the first five or 10 minutes because the game needs to cache all of the shaders and animations. Have but once you've started playing for a while, it starts to be a little more stutter free and lag free. Stutters will still exist, which is of course why I keep dying in this game and for no other reason. Now personally, I'd consider this not really playable at a competitive level, but if you want to play Counter-Strike 2 casually, then the M4 Max can easily handle this game. Even though it's running through the Windows translation layer, it still manages to do okay. Speaking of translation and emulation layers, here we are testing out PlayStation 3 emulation. Here we're playing the very first Uncharted game. So this is one of the more demanding games to emulate on the Apple Silicon Mac. Here we're using the recently released RPCS3 native ARM Mac port. The game hovers at about 25 to 30 FPS and was originally capped at 30 FPS anyway on the original PlayStation 3. And for now, if you want to get your Uncharted fix, this is probably the, the only way to do it. Unfortunately, we can't run the newer Sony PC ports of those games through crossover. There are some compatibility issues for now. I'm going to be doing plenty of other emulation testing on the base M4 and M4 Pro chips over the coming days. So if you have any suggestions, then please make sure to leave a comment. But for now, Uncharted is running okay. Definitely some room for improvement in the future on the Mac. Next up, we're testing out the game Lush Foil Photography Sim. So this was suggested by a watcher on the stream. And it's definitely one of the prettiest games that I've seen run on a Mac. This is actually the Windows version running through crossover over preview. It's a photorealistic Unreal Engine 5 game all about taking photographs and definitely one of the most interesting first person shooter games that I've ever seen. So this is a free demo that you can try out as well and you can go ahead and easily switch out to any locale. Here I've been transported to some Tory gates in Japan and Unreal Engine 5 allows this game to look absolutely amazing. Personally I like walking around in this world possibly more than taking the actual photographs. Definitely make sure to check out this one. Lastly we're looking at a couple more Windows games running through crossover. So of course this is Diablo 4 running at 1440p at the Ultra Graphics preset. Here the frame rate seems to fluctuate from about 75 to 90 FPS which ain't too bad. So Diablo 4 is another game where we can actually enable ray tracing on the M3 and M4 generations of chips. And the implementation isn't too taxing on here. Frame rate basically halves from about 75 to about 40 FPS. That's when we've turned all of the ray tracing options to the maximum. However, personally, I can't really see much of a difference. I prefer ray tracing off so we can get that precious frame rate back. Every FPS counts, especially when we're running these games through translation layers like crossover. So the last game that we're looking at is AAA title Black Myth Wukong, another Windows game running through crossover preview. So this is a very graphically demanding game. So I've had to turn down the settings a little bit. So we're running at 1440p at the medium graphics preset. In order to get a decent frame rate, I've turned on FSR 3 upscaling to 65%, which is the rough equivalent of the quality mode. In fights and exploration around this world, it dips down to about 45 FPS and it'll go up to about 55 FPS. And timing your attacks and dodges is definitely one of the most important part of this game so you want as many frames as possible. If I were playing this again I'd probably turn FSR on even more aggressively to say 50% which would be the equivalent of think balanced. But anyway, having a game like this running on the Mac is definitely an achievement for Windows translation layers like Crossover. Getting a title like this, a DirectX 12 game, looking so good and playing so well, despite the fact that we're running through the x86-64 to ARM64 translation layer called Rosetta 2. The entire game is being run through Wine as well as the D3D Metal DirectX 12 to Metal translation layer. And thanks to the power of the M4 Max chip, we're managing to run this game at playable frame rates, which itself is a miracle. Anyway, that's my first look at gaming on the M4 Max chip. If you want me to test out any other games on the M4 Max or any other M4 chip, I'll be testing them in the coming days. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.